everyone, it's Emily. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a book haul video, which I love watching book hauls and I love filming them and I've accumulated quite a few books. I went to my library sale and when the books are 25 cents or a dollar, you just go cuckoo. So that's what I did. There's also a few books that I did purchase on book outlets. If you don't know about book outlets, I will link it down below. It's awesome, a lot of uh, books for quite cheap. So let's get into it because I accumulated quite a bit. So I'm just gonna grab and go. I've been wanting to read more Stephen King, so whenever I saw some of them for 25 cents, I jumped and I know there's other ones in there, so I'm just gonna show them whenever I find them. And the first two are Misery and this one is uh, Gerald's Game. They didn't have the dust jacket, but I don't really mind to be honest. And I started this one when I was waiting in the parking and it is kind of messed up, so if you have read it, let me know if it gets better because, whoa, I was not expecting this. For Misery, I had heard great reviews, but when I got home, I realized that I got it in French, so I guess I will be reading some French. Some people were asking me if I would read some books in French. Well, apparently I will. <laughs> I'm actually planning on reading some of the classics in French too because they, if they were written in French, might as well read them in French, but yeah, if I ever buy some books in French by accident or not, I will be reading them in French. Next I purchased a series again by Stephen King and I have been meaning to start this one and there's a movie coming out I believe in June so when I saw them, 25 cents, I just grabbed them all. So I'm obviously talking about The Dark Tower by Stephen King so I grabbed the first one, the third one and the fourth one. They didn't have the second one which I might just purchase if I enjoyed the first one because I'm actually planning on starting it in January so if you are interested. I'm thinking about doing my own type of readathon. I don't know if I'm just gonna just go ahead and do it. Basically my plan is to read as many books as possible just to uh, reduce my TBR because I don't know about you but I feel like my TBR is increasing to an alarming rate and I'm totally okay with it because I would rather have too many books to read than not enough. But I wanted to read a lot of like smaller books because they've been accumulating and this one is really short. There's like 200 pages and I've been dying to read it. So I thought since it's short, I might include it in there. But from all I know is that it is a high fantasy series and it's pretty epic. I don't want to know too much. I like going into books as blind as possible. But again, there's a movie coming out. I found them for cheap. I grabbed them. The next book I grabbed is Speak by Laurie Alice uh, Anderson, which from what I know is a YA book. I think this is about bullying and I've been meaning to read it because I've heard a few people mention it, so I grabbed it. I have heard so many people mention this series and I've been really wanting to read it and it's the series is at Codex Alera. This one, the first one is Furies of Calderon by Jim Butcher. When I heard that this series was a mix of Roman Empire and Pokemon, I was so intrigued and I decided to get it. From what I know, you're following the main character that is part of a like high fantasy world where there's powers, magical powers, but the person doesn't have any. I don't remember if it's a girl or a boy. It is a boy, but basically, like I said, he struggles, he doesn't have a magical powers in a world where people have them. So I thought that could be a really good series to start. So I grabbed the first one and I didn't realize how big these were. <laughs> 600, almost 700 pages in there. So. I will totally eat this up. I love fantasies. I'm planning on reading as many fantasy books as possible. I feel like this year I tried to like mix and match a little bit and I think I'm gonna read a lot more fantasy in 2017 for sure. The next one I grabbed is The Princess Bride by William uh, Goldman and I haven't seen the movie but from what I've heard that I heard it was really really good. It's kind of a funny love-ish story and I started it but then I stopped myself because I realized I should keep any like romance-ish book for February because I'm not big on romance books but if you have really good ones that aren't too like cheesy definitely I feel free to leave them in the comments below because I am planning on reading some for February and I thought I might as well keep this one for then. From what I know from the beginning that I've heard you're basically following a girl that is called Butternut? Buttercup. And Right there you know the book is not going to be serious and at this point she just lost her true love and apparently there's going to be a lot of epic things happening like from the back it says basically that she's going to be kidnapped, there's going to be some pirates and everything so I'm intrigued, I will totally be reading this in February. In the beginning of the month I started reading the series, uh, the Raven Cycle series by Maggie Stavehotter 
and I read the first one and I was expecting to not love it that much. My my hopes were like a mix of like high hopes and low hopes because I feel like this year I've been trying to read a lot of like really popular YA books on booktube and overall I've been kind of like I have nothing against YA books, I do have some of them that are actually making it into my favorite books of the year, but I feel like overall a lot of them end up being kind of disappointing for me, and this one was kind of a mix. I was pleasantly surprised about a lot of it, but I didn't love it as much as everyone else, basically. If you're someone that really likes contemporary and doesn't like fantasy, these are really like an easy way to get into fantasy because they're more like magical realism. So yeah, I did like it enough to continue the series, but I'm not sure how I'm gonna feel because I know the second book you're following another character, which is uh, Ronan, and I didn't love him, but from what I've heard, the second book makes you love him. We'll see. I've been meaning to read more Ursula K. Le Guin's books, so I picked up two more. I have I have read uh, Is It the Lap of Evan? And it was really good and I liked her writing. It was definitely more difficult than what I'm used to. So I decided to grab some more of her books. If you have any favorites that you want to recommend, please feel free to do so. I do want to pick up also The Dispossessed. I'm also planning on reading that one. But the first one is a YA series. Again, fantasy because hell yeah. This is the first one of the series. This one is a wizard at Earthsea. And from what I know, why fantasy, magical powers, magicians, I'm all about it. I feel like I should have just poured them all, tried to find them all, or just, I, I've been eyeing actually on uh, the book deposit. They have the four books in one book, which I might end up getting because this is so short. It's like less than 200 pages. So again, probably gonna be included in January because I want to do that type of readathon. So yay. The second one I got from her is The Left Hand of Darkness, obviously Ursula K. Le Guin. I didn't know much whenever I first picked it up, but after reading the back, I'm actually really intrigued. In this book, you're following a human that is basically an emissary uh, to go and visit some aliens world. And in this world, their people can choose and change their gender. And I thought that was a really interesting plot, so can't wait to read it. I'm currently rereading Harry Potter, although it's my first time reading them in English, and I've been really happy with it, but I feel like part of me is gonna have like a really terrible hangover afterwards. So I decided to grab this series because I've been told quite a few times that I needed to read it, and it's basically middle grade magical fantasy book, so I thought that would be a great thing to read after Harry Potter. So I grabbed this book, and oh my god, is it gonna be look... Yeah, it's really intense with the lights, I'm really sorry. This is the Bartimus, Bartimus trilogy? Can't say that word. Uh, this is the Amulet of Sarmacand, and it looks really crazy on camera, but but this is basically, like I said, middle grade. Uh, you're following an 11 year old boy, and there's some magic, which this is probably all I'm gonna need after reading Harry Potter, so I grabbed this one. I've been meaning to read more uh, thrillers too, so I grabbed this one because I had heard really great reviews. This is Big Little Lies by Lion Mariotti, and I didn't know that much about it, except that most people seem to enjoy it, but from the back it seems really interesting. They're basically saying that it's uh, a brilliant take about uh, ex-husbands, second wives, mothers, daughters, school year scandal, and the dangerous little lies we tell ourselves just to survive. It's a thriller, I don't want to know too much, but I've heard it was good, so I can't wait to see for myself. I've been taking my time reading uh, The Mistborn Trilogy by Brendan Sanderson because this was basically the only trilogy that I had from him. I am totally planning on reading every single book that he has ever written. I feel like I keep getting recommendation and I'm like, I know, I'm totally planning on reading all his books, but I have like a certain order in my head because I want to read like his first ones to begin with and keep the best one for last obviously. But if you don't know, uh, the Mistborn trilogy, there's a second trilogy in the same world, but I believe it's like 200 years later, and obviously I'm gonna be reading this. All I know is that basically since the story is 200 years later, the characters from the first trilogies are basically legends now, and from what I know it's also kind of western-ish, which I was really intrigued. So obviously I grabbed the whole trilogy because it's out. The first one being The Alloy of Law, the second one is The Shadow of Self, and then the last one is The Bands of Mourning. Now that I have the whole second trilogy, I will be like maritoning the crap out of them probably as soon as I can. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe I've heard that he's planning a third trilogy in that world. That would be pretty cool. 
Speaking of Brendan Sanderson, I do have the first book in that trilogy, but I wanted the whole thing so I could just read it all without stressing about it. The first one was Steelheart, the second one is a Firefight, and the third one is Calamity, and this is The Reckoners. In this world, some people end up having superpowers and they basically become super villains. And then there's a group of people without any powers that end up trying to, I don't know if it's kill them or just, you know, fix the issue. Now that I have the whole trilogy, I'll be able to marathon them. Next, I decided to pick up this book. I feel like I've seen a few people mention it uh, lately on booktube, and it is Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nouvel, which I picked it up because I all I knew was that it was a sci-fi book. And can we talk about the cover? Like, how awesome is this? I just couldn't resist when I saw it. And I believe the author is Canadian. Actually, I think he's from Quebec too, so... Quebec? Yeah. Obviously, sci-fi book from someone that lives where I live, obviously needed to pick it up. <laughs> Earlier this year, I read Red Rising by Pierce Brown, so I decided to continue the trilogies. This one is the second one, it's Golden Sun. And even though I liked the series, I felt like maybe it was just the timing. I just didn't feel that much into it. But if you have heard nothing about it, it's basically a mix of Onga games on Mars. Kind of a little bit like Game of Thrones because because. <laughs> so I decided to uh, continue the series. I picked up the second book and I will be reading them at one point in the third book too. So I have it. I will continue. Because I didn't pick up enough books about magical powers, I decided to pick up The Magicians by Le Grossman because yay. Sadly, this one is the one with the TV series cover, but for 25 cents, I just can't complain. Or I can, but you know, it's I didn't have a choice to still pick it up. I've been really curious. I've been told that this, this is basically Harry Potter, but like college form with characters that are not likable. So people either end up hating the crap out of it because the characters are not likable, or they end up loving it because it gives them Harry Potter vibes-ish. I don't know in which group I will be, but I am totally planning on reading it because magic. I'm realizing the whole haul is like, a lot of fantasy, a little bit of thriller. <laughs> hey, I know what I like. I have heard so many great things about this book and I believe, is it, is it a movie or a TV series? I've been like really avoiding hearing anything about it. And again, by Stephen King, this is the last one I picked up and uh, it was from the library, as you can see. I will probably try to just remove this. From what I know, this is a thriller traveling time sci-fi uh, about JFK assassination, so I'm curious, it is absolutely huge. Like, have you seen this thing? Like, so huge. How many pages is there? There's over 800 pages, which doesn't seem that much, but like the pages must be thick because that thing looks like I could kill someone with this, basically. I will get around to it as soon as I stop being scared of it because this is huge. Probably will get around to it more like towards the summer because during the winter, I'm all about fantasy, and this one is more like sci-fi, contemporary-ish, time-traveling book. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. I feel like this is getting really long. I'm gonna try to go quicker. Uh, this is The Martian's Chronicles by Ray Bradbury. From what I know, this is like short stories-ish, and they're somewhat linked. I've heard that he's a great storyteller, so I obviously grabbed the second one that was there too. This is The October Country. And I believe this one, again, short story-ish, but aura one, which is probably something that I should keep for October or read it before and then be able to recommend it for October. I'm always in the mood for horror books. So I grabbed these two because they are so weird. Like they probably will look weird on my shelves, but I just thought they were cute. I don't know about you, but I love whenever there's multiple books in one book because I feel like I can get more for my money. Although this was actually at my library, so it was 25 cents. Which I get so many questions about like where I get books for so cheap and look at your library. Honestly, you would be surprised. There's so many books for like a dollar, two dollars and they're like in really, really great condition. Like, like you can see this was used, but it still is in perfect condition. There was like five different <laughs> one of this ones. I picked up the best looking one. So this is The Mists of Avalon by Marianne Simmer Bradley. And I didn't know much about it except that the reviews were good about it and that it's about King Arthur so that's all I want to know there's three books in one like I might not even like it but the fact that there's three books 
in one book. I'm like so happy about it. They're just so big and fluffy and if you like the world, you have so long to be in it. There's actually like over 800 pages. I knew absolutely nothing about this book except that it is high fantasy, so I decided to grab it. This is a uh, Tigana by Guy Gabriel K. It was recommended by uh, the people that were working at the library, so grabbed it. And I know this one is not the first one in the series, but I was planning on reading them and it was their hardcover, but why not? The Spine of the World by R.A. Salvatore. I don't know much about, but that's what happens when you go to a library sale. We are almost done. So like I said, uh, all fiction was 25 cents, but uh, classics, which I'm keeping to do a whole hauls of classic in um, January. So if you're someone that is into it, keep an eye out because there's going to be a bunch there. But it's also the case for nonfiction. So I grabbed three different nonfictions that were really appealing to me. If you don't know anything about me, I love science and I wanted to read more books about it. And I grabbed some that looked interesting to me. The first one is Cosmos by, oh, is it Carl Sagan? <laughs> I'm blind. I have watched a TV series where there's uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson in there and it was really, really awesome. So I didn't know if it was exactly the TV series, but reading it, Seems like something I will enjoy too. You either love these things or you don't, and I just, I love it. <laughs> the second science book I picked up was A Brief History of Time, From the Big Bang to Black Holes by Stephen Hawking, because obviously, this is getting scary. And last book is not science, but it was also a nonfiction that seemed interesting to me, and it is Guns, Germs, and Steel by Jared Diamond. So those are all the books that I've purchased lately, my excuse is that none of them were full price, which it's always good, but I am planning on buying some at Chapters uh, whenever there's the sales after Christmas. Yeah, I have my uh, wish list, I have my basket that is full of the books that I'm planning on buying, so I can't wait for sales. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and to subscribe if it's not already done, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!